It's a platform used by 15 million users in 190 countries. It is valued at $2.5 billion. When it was starting out, it took the founder three years to get an investor to talk to her. Her story teaches us the power of not giving up. In today's episode, we will discuss the founder of Canva, Melanie Perkins. Melanie started showing signs of entrepreneurship from 14. She started a scarf company. This is where she learned the power of cold calling. She would call every store in Perth and present her scarf to them. At 19, she was studying at Perth University and also taught design to students in her spare time. As she was teaching, the students kept asking her questions, not so much on design, but on the software they were using. Melanie soon realized that designers give up not because they can't design, it's because of the tools used in the design world. The programs used back then were complicated. Thinking that there has to be a better solution, she got to work. Initially, the plan was to start a school yearbook. Her mom's living room became the printing press. She would design, physically print yearbooks and deliver them at doors. The yearbook business was growing, but people kept asking her if they could use similar designs for restaurant menus, newsletters, wedding cards, etc. Thinking on ways to help out her customer, she came up with an idea. An idea that would change not only her life, but of many around the world. The idea was ambitious, and with no tech experience or money, things were looking hard. To get investors on board, she pitched her idea to 100-plus investors on various meetups, but kept hearing no. Finding an investor was not easy, as there was absolutely no money coming in. She spent nights on her brother's apartment floor. It took her three years to find an investor who was willing to talk to her for no more than five minutes, Bill Ty. With her first meeting with Bill, Bill did not show any interest, as he kept himself busy on the phone while she was presenting. Melanie left the meeting disappointed, thinking that she will have to wait a little longer. Days went by. One day, Melanie gets a call from Bill. Bill told her that he is willing to invest, but because he didn't have any tech experience, he wanted Cameron Adams to join her team. Cameron had recently worked at Google and knew a thing or two about tech industry. They got together and started recruiting. It took another year to build a team. Finally, Canva was launched in 2013. The launch was not taken kindly by one of the publishers that described Canva as nothing but a confusing platform. The article may have been negative, but it helped Canva in a big way because this article was read by many. People started to take their chance with the Canva as it was free. As users were coming in, they realized that Canva was actually straightforward. From there, things picked up. More and more users started to join Canva from around the world. The culture at Canva cannot be overlooked. With her times of eating lunch by herself, she wanted to make sure that at Canva, people ate lunches together. So Canva provides lunch every day. Canva office has clubs for board games, indoor soccer, video games, rock climbing, and on-site gym. Employees are encouraged to bring in their kids and pets to work. Five years after launching, Canva was valued at $1 billion. In 2019, that valuation jumped up to $3.2 billion. Canva is spread across the globe. In six short years, Canva has helped create close to 2 billion designs. Melanie's story shows that if you do not give up, you sure can achieve your dream. The reason we struggle with our insecurities, because we compare our behind-the-scenes footage with everyone else's highlight reel. So keep pushing through when no one is watching. Until next time, have a good one.